Allegations of abuse brought to light at a local Lutheran church as at least 20 people accuse a former pastor of misconduct. And a new report shows some say other pastors did not do enough to stop it. KXAN investigator Avery Travis is joining us now to explain how higher leadership in the Lutheran church is now aiming for some accountability. For months, we've been following an investigation by the Southwestern Texas Synod, the Lutheran churches in this part of the state. Just a few days ago, a committee voted to remove two retired pastors from its roster of ministers over allegations of inaction in these cases years ago. Meanwhile, some of the women involved tell me they are stepping out of the shadows now to empower other potential victims to come forward. I don't know if it's this one. Or was it this one? That's the problem with having too many of these albums. Oh, that's the church choir. Here, this is vacation Bible school. From summer camp to Christmas celebrations. Not having any family in this country. Birthdays and anniversaries. We involve the church people and the pastors in all of our life. Gethsemane Lutheran Church is woven into the fabric of Helen Maidman's memories. So many good. But in the shadows, there were things that weren't so good. The darkest for her was in 1998, after she learned her father died. She says Vance Daniel, a retired pastor from Gethsemane, showed up at her home. I let him in, and the next thing I knew, he was all over me. Moments she should have been grieving, she says she remembers fighting him off. And then he was gone. Maidman says she told another Gethsemane pastor, but when nothing was done, she carried on and carried this memory alone, even through Daniel's death in 2000. But recently, she felt called to come forward. I argued with it. I said, I don't want to report this. I just want to get rid of the pain. It would even hurt when I breathed deeply, that kind of pain. And then other people came out of the shadows. Last December, the head of the Southwestern Texas Synod of the Lutheran Church, Bishop Sue Briner, sent a letter to the congregation at Gethsemane, notifying them an investigation had been launched into the allegations about Pastor Daniel. Bishop Briner also notified eight other congregations where Daniel previously worked, from Hutto to the Houston area to Harlingen, all the way to Georgia and North Carolina. By February, the church investigation revealed at least 20 victims with credible allegations against Daniel. Some even confirmation-aged kids at a church in Hutto and other women at Gethsemane. I'm angry. I'm angry that this has happened to so many women and it's just now coming out. One of them, who asked KXAN to conceal her identity for this story, told the bishop she and four other women in her Bible study group experienced some type of abuse or inappropriate behavior from Daniel in the 80s. At the time, they didn't feel police would take them seriously, she says, so they went together to church leadership. They just let it drop, and we didn't make enough noise to make sure something was done. Gethsemane's longtime leadership denies ever being told about the allegations. In letters to the congregation, the former head pastor says he was grieved to hear about the pain these women endured, but, quote, had I been made aware of concerns about Pastor Daniel, I would have never refused to act on such concerns, a statement he echoed to KXAN through his attorney. Despite the support of many in the congregation who voted to keep him on, he retired in February amid the complex controversy. According to the bishop's investigation, several of the women also went further, previously taking the concerns to two other bishops who were higher on the church's ladder of authority at the time, but still, quote, nothing was done. So when this abuse originally happened in the 80s, I think there was an attitude of, we all know this goes on, but we just don't talk about it. Fortunately, things have started to change. Uh, the Me Too movement has, I think, emboldened some people to come forward with their stories. Dr. Joseph Laycock, who teaches religious studies at Texas State University, says he's seen more churches address abuse allegations publicly, too. And they're honest about what happened and transparent about what they've tried to do to make it right they will see that this is actually a much better solution to the problem. More and more women have sent me emails and saying, yes, this happened to me too. The women KXAN spoke with say they can't rewrite history, but hope their stories help others speak up in the future. The truth always does come out. And this is says in the Bible, truth makes you free. KXAN checked with synod leaders and filed records requests with dozens of police, sheriffs, and district attorneys in other areas where Daniel served. But so far, no reports have come to light.
Huddle Lutheran told KXAN it's making efforts to contact even former members to make them aware of the situation or offer support and mental health services. The church council at Gethsemane told KXAN in a statement they're praying for the victims and that abuse of any kind has no place in their church. What about the former head pastor mentioned in your story? He actually withdrew his request to be on the roster of retired ministers, and that was before the committee voted to remove him, because he says he believes this investigation process was adversarial, threatening, unfair, and even traumatic on the congregation. He said, quote, a synod that can and will tolerate this behavior from a bishop is not in keeping with the Lutheran tradition he loves. We also want to note, we reached out to a member of Daniel's family for this report who chose not to comment. Now we've heard from a lot of people while we reported this story, and we understand it's a complex and emotional issue for many. So we've really tried to dive into some more of that in the story online. You know, we know it's mandatory, Avery, for clergy members here under Texas law to report abuse to law enforcement. So how do mandatory reporting laws factor into this case? Mandatory reporting laws, as you know, only apply in cases of child abuse. Both of the women we spoke to in this story were adults at the time of their alleged assaults. Now we noted in the story story in Hutto, we're told some alleged victims were underage at the time of their abuse. At this point, we have not been given any indication that a pastor there failed to report the abuse. Avery, thank you so much for that reporting. KXAN has previously investigated abuse allegations in other churches and organizations, including our series, The Accused, which explores recent cases within the Catholic Church. We have a link in this story online right now, along with resources for survivors in the investigative section of KXAN.com.